Hey everyone, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you what I believe is the best Canva alternative. So let's dive into this video now. So if you didn't see in the intro there, the tool is called Stencil and you can go to GetStencil.com or use the affiliate link in the description if you are interested in signing up for one of their premium plans. And we're going to dive into a little bit more about that right now. But I just wanted to say before we get started, that is a great way to create social media images and in turn improve your social media engagement. So let's dive in and look at some of the pricing options here and we'll look at the features as well. So if we see there's a free option and you can save up to 10 images a month, you have a limit on your photos and icons. You can upload images that you can then edit as well. It's very similar to Canva in terms of editing and things like this. Now it is actually more affordable than Canva's prices because for right now Canva is $12.95 a month for something similar to the pro plan and then you have to pay $12.95 per additional member for a team membership on Canva at this time. There is a $12 a month as well for the unlimited plan here. Now it does say when paid annually so you just got to note that from the get-go here. There also are a bunch of features here. Let's go into the feature section. It says you can create visual content faster and easier than you ever imagined. And it is very fast and easy to use. And in my opinion, I personally think it's easier to use than Canva. Not that Canva is hard to use in my opinion, but I just think this is a better alternative and it gives you a lot of easy to use options. So you can use a bunch of Creative Commons images, you can use super high resolution, save your favorites. And I'm going to go into how to use the tool itself, but you can also uh, have pre made sizes you can use. You can create your own sizes, custom, and you can save them. There's a lot of possibilities to use in this tool. So let's just log in here and get started with the process. So, as you can see on the left side, this is actually an image that I was just making for a video I just did on my website. So let's go here and delete that and we'll start with a clean slate here. So we have on the left side photos, icons, templates, quotes down here. And then we have uploads for the account. We have logos and watermarks and then saved images down here as well. So I wanted to show you an example. So let's just say you wanted to get an image here and you want it to have a new image for a specific video. Now if we go down here we can click and right now I have it on YouTube thumbnail since that's what I was just creating. And in here you can run through and create things. So let's just say you wanted a Facebook photo. You could set that and now the dimensions change to what the presets are for a Facebook photo. The best presets for that. There's also Instagram, LinkedIn for a blog post feature, a blog post image ebook cover there's ads over here so there's a ton of different ones that are pre-made or give you the correct sizes right out of the box over here there's also headers for things like YouTube channel art Twitter headers Facebook covers and then there's a, a custom section as well where I've created a bunch of different custom sizes for example I like to use a specific blog size post on this one blog that I have and I think it's like 1024 by 800 is the sizing. So I created that right in here. You can name it and then you can choose 1024 by 800 and then click add. And then it will save this in your pre-made settings over here in your custom settings. So let's just say we wanted to go to Facebook photo. We'll click this X and now it sets it to that. And if we want to use a specific image from over here, we can do that. We can go to icons, templates. We can use all different things to get started. Let's just go to photos and I'll just throw this image up right here. You just click it and it automatically goes in, locks in. Now, if you were needing to adjust it, you can do that. If you wanted to add text, you can go over here, add text. You can use a toggle grid or you can clear the image entirely and just click delete and yes. So, I'm going to actually go over here and go to uploads. So let's just say I upload an image that I have from other sites and I have a bunch of premium images that I purchased on another site. And let's just say I want to use one of them for a post. I'll go here and I'll click on this image and it puts it in there and you see it automatically doesn't size it. 
when I clicked on this, it automatically locked into the size of the Facebook photo presets. When I put this image in from my upload section, it made it small. Now, if you go to resize this, you want to be sure that you can keep the quality of the image. So let's just go and drag the corner and watch how it's a little blurry right now. If we let it go, it resets in and then it will take the blur away from it. And now it's no longer blurry again. You can see like this a little bit blurry and then you give it a second and then it makes the quality change and improve. So you can do that and lock in the image. You can drag it around and you can see it's centered when the lines line up like that. Now, if you wanted to, you can make the image darker. You can change text, things like this. So let's just make it darker right here. And that is just done by clicking on the image itself and then darker over here. If you wanted a color overlay, you can do that. You can choose a color overlay. So let's just say you want it to be red. You can choose how effective that red overlay is on your image. I'm going to go back and make it black just by doing that. And I'll put it down there and I'll make it darker. I'll just make the image darker rather than use the overlay. But it gives you a very similar effect. Now, if you want to, you can go through these different filters here. There's lots of different options. And I usually don't use the filters, to be honest with you, but they are there if that's something you want to use. Now, if you want to, you can also crop, you can duplicate. There's so many options in here, and it's so straightforward and easy to use. So let's just make this darker just for this effect here. And I will make it 50, and then I'll just add in some text. Now, when you click this, it adds the text, and you can resize the text right here. You can choose the different fonts in this drop down here and you can see them live and what they're going to look like right on the screen. Now I'm going to actually make the color right here, text color. I'm going to make it white so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to click on the image and make the image actually a little bit darker so we can see it even better. And I'll have it at 75 there. I'll change the text and we can go through and choose text that we want. So let's just say you wanted something a little fun. You can do something like this. You can actually italicize it to make it not as crazy, but I'll leave it like that. And let's just say, welcome. And now if you want to, you can resize it here as big as one, as small as you want. You can also align it to the right, left, center. And on certain ones, you're not going to be able to bold it or italicize it. On this one, you can italicize it and underline it if you'd like. And you can also have an outline color and a background color changed as well for the text itself. So if you were happy with the image like that, you could go down here and click save. And right here it will tell you, you can save it as a template. I actually don't usually do that, but you can if that's going to be a same kind of image that you're going to reuse often. It really helps to have that as an option. You can download it here or you can preview and share it right here. So there's lots of options within this to create some beautiful images. I'm actually going to go and delete that. And the text is actually still there. So I'm going to delete that as well. And now we're left with a clean slate. I'm going to go down here and change the size of the image. I'm just going to go to custom and I'm going to do 700 by 750 by 500. And here I'm going to upload another image here from my upload section. So to upload, you would just click on here and then you would be able to upload an image from your computer that you have. I'll click this one right here and I'm going to make this take up most of the screen. And let's say I wanted to have my watermark on this page. I can go to logos and watermarks and I also uploaded this here, this transparent one and it's WP with Tom. So if I wanted to, I can make this even show up right here on the laptop, which is kind of cool or on the iPad. I mean, which is kind of cool. And then you can download it or save it like that. If you want to have your transparent logos or your watermarks on each of these pages, I would recommend making them transparent. You can do that. Now, let's say I wanted to go and add something else to this. Let's say I wanted to add some text and I'm going to add in just some basic text. I'm going to change the text size here and the style. And I want the background here to be transparent. So right now the background is white. And you can just click make background transparent and then you can see the transparency go into effect when you're using this. So it's awesome because you can then use this as something like a logo or a watermark when you have this transparent background. 
That's what I've done myself with my videos. If you see the WP with Tom, WP, WT in the lower right corner, it is basically a transparent logo mark, which is this on a transparent background that I've simply uploaded into the branding defaults within the YouTube channel. So that's a way that you can do that within your own images. If you want to keep your branding consistent throughout your images, that's a great way to do that. And lastly, I should just point out that there is an undo, a change history and a redo option here. So let's say I wanted to undo that and make it non-transparent. That's how I would do that. I can undo it again, take the text size down. So if you make mistakes like I seem to do all the time, you can easily go through there and edit that as well. So there's also a support option here in the lower left as well. And I wanted to tell you about that. So that is basically how I would sum up stencil or get stencil.com. I think it's one of the best options to make easy images and i'm not saying that canva is bad but i think this is a good alternative to canva if this is something that you want now you could actually probably use both free plans and get a lot of usage out of the two and get a lot of benefits out of the two or you can do what i did and sign up for a premium plan on stencil and just take advantage of the full awesomeness that they have to offer here at stencil so i hope this video was helpful and gave you a good idea of a great alternative and it showed you how to easily navigate around and do some things within Stencil. I could go into a lot more detail, but I really just wanted to get this out there and show you the tool itself. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for viewing, everyone.